All right, hey, he's Mega here, and I'm shooting another Honda Super Cup video. All right, so I just hit 8,000 miles on my Honda Super Cup, and uh, when you hit 8,000 miles, it says in the service manual and the and the owner's manual, you need to clean the centrifugal filter and the oil strainer. All right, and that involves a little uh, engine surgery. All right, just a little bit. We're gonna get in there a little bit. So. So Hades Mega uh, wanted to do a video of showing you uh, what it takes to do this. All right, I watched I watched a couple other videos too. Uh, but anyway, if you look in the manual, all right, at 8,000 miles, you're supposed to clean the engine oil strainer and the oil centrifugal filter. And I'll just read it to you guys. It, there's a there's a little wrench with a screwdriver icon, and it says technical. In the interest of safety, have your vehicle serviced by your dealer, all right? So this is something that they don't want you to do. They don't want the owners to do. They want somebody, you know, qualified to do it. <laughs> I would I would think I, I think I can do it, all right? I've done it before. I've done something similar before. I've changed, like, clutches and stuff, and that involves pretty much doing the same thing, all right? Uh, except this time we'll be cleaning an oil filter and stuff. Why, why Honda, do you design something like this where you have to open up the engine to, to, to clean some, some part in there for routine, kind of, kind of routine maintenance is what I want to say. All right. The only, the good thing is you only have to do it every 8,000 miles. So we'll see what's, what's in there. All right. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I've, I've gone through one after the oil change, I went through one, one, like one oil chain cycle and uh, I had I didn't it didn't use a drop of oil man it still got enough oil in there all right so um, I'm gonna do an oil change and then we're gonna change the the oil filter screen all right uh, because obviously one of the things you got to do is you gotta drain the oil or else there's gonna be oil all over the place all right okay uh, so le let's go take a look at some of the stuff I got to do this and we'll take a look at the manual um, I've I am NOT gonna do it by the manual okay guys um, the manual has a bunch of stuff that uh, you have to take. It tells you to take it out, and this uh, don't. Um, and there's like really no reason to take it out, all right? But what I will do is I will take the foot peg. Yeah, I will take the step bar out, and I will take the shift lever out because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay the bike on its side to to clean the filter, <laughs> okay? Because I heard there's a part in there that will fall out, and it, it's like pretty much impossible. To put it back in, all right, uh, with the bike standing straight up and down, all right. So this is the first time I'm gonna lay my Super Cub down. <laughs> well, we'll lay it down gently. I got a little blanket and a mat for it to take a nap on. It'll it'll be great. I think it'll enjoy it. <laughs> all right. Okay, I closed the garage so uh, so the lighting is a little better in this direction. <laughs> okay, so the things I'm gonna be used to do this. Uh, Oil filter strainer and uh, and centrifugal filter dealy um, is are these parts okay? So we're gonna need a right side crankcase cover. All right, this is a genuine Honda part. All right, I got this from where did I get? I got this from Steady Garage. All right, so Steady Garage has these. They have some also fancy ones from I think Chimera and stuff. Um, but I went. I chose to go with the genuine Honda stuff. All right. Uh, I would highly, highly suggest you may get lucky and you may not tear the gasket when you take it off, all right? And if you don't, you could probably reuse it, all right? But if you do tear the gasket, make sure you got one handy, all right? And I, I actually ordered two of them, right? And we only need one, but I ordered two for a future oil change, okay? And then, uh, and then I ordered this. There you go. Uh, this was three dollars and thirty-five cents. I'll put how much this. I'll put a subtitle below how much this cost me. All right. It, it's not a lot. It's a few dollars, guys. It's, uh, it's just getting it is the hard part. And you could get these at your local Honda dealer, which is where I got this at. All right. You can also get it at Revzilla for what. Um, but uh, but yeah, there's the part number right there. All right. It's the gasket oil filter. All right. That's what you need. I think I bought two of them. Yeah. There's two. And I heard heard that when you take these off, you damage them. So it's a good idea to have have it on there. All right. Uh, and like this was three dollars for two of them, guys. So super duper cheap. Awesome. I got that at my local Honda dealer. It was GP Sports, uh, GP or GP or Grand Prix Sports in San Jose, right? South San, kind of south southwest San Jose, <laughs> San Jose. All right. And then I also got this from Steady Garage. 
this is the oil filter screen all right this is the thing we're act we're supposed to clean i bought one um i'll probably change it out and then i'll take the other one and clean it all right that's what we'll do but i don't think uh it's not very difficult to clean you just clean it with like some brake parts cleaner or something good to go just just make sure there's no big we're just going to make sure there's no big particles stuck in it all right that's the important thing we don't want it to be plug but i bought a brand new one let's go use it it's only a few bucks guys <laughs> and then it, it, you get good for another eight thousand miles so i think that's a good deal and then i've got some amsoil synthetic metric motorcycle oil it's 10w30 synthet full synthetic right so um and it's uh something it's smooth confident shifts all right so this is for clutch stuff right it's for it's a motorcycle oil guys okay because motorcycles have clutches that are bathed in oil all right so that's why that's why you can't use like a motor uh like a a car oil all right because they don't have clutches in their engines all right um and, and i i went over that in the oil changing video okay uh, i ran out of i actually ran out of that lucas stuff so i guess i'm gonna have to buy some that i think that's the that's the oil that i'm gonna go with when uh when i'm just doing the regular oil changes this is all this oil this and the lucas oil was just left over from uh from my old impulse tt all right my electric motorcycle it had a gearbox that used this specific oil and what do you know the super cub uses the exact same oil so <laughs> okay and if it's brand new i yeah i would put synthetic in it i would i would spend some good money because it really it only takes one quart it's not that much money guys it's not like a car that takes like five or six quarts it's only going to take one and it, it did, mine didn't even burn any of the oil okay so okay so yep that's all the parts i got i will put a um i will put a links in the description where you can get these all right or or the part numbers and everything and how much each part cost me all right and then um and then yeah so that's that's where you can get it uh, so let's uh let's start the party okay here we are we're looking at the service manual this is the maintenance schedule on page three three okay three dash three and one of the things you got to do at eight thousand miles is clean you got to clean the crankcase breather okay yeah we can do that that's easy okay i don't remember if i shot a video about that um so yeah two two of the two of the three things that you got to clean this is very easy the crankcase breather it's, it takes a minute you know um the engine oil centrifugal filter all right and the engine oil strainer screen all right so you got to do that every eight thousand miles so i'm at eight thousand miles right now um and and yeah so that's that's the major maintenance and then i gotta replace the if you guys are wondering we gotta replace the spark plug right but that that, that will not be the part of this video okay guys it's really easy to change the spark plug too by the way okay so every eight thousand miles all right so you would pretty much go um eight thousand every four thousand yeah yeah every four thousand you would change the oil where is that oil okay and change the oil replace yeah every four thousand you change the oil all right but every uh every eight thousand so every two oil changes you will do this service on it okay you'll clean the, the strainer and all that good stuff all right and i'm at eight thousand right now okay what's the first thing we're gonna do we're gonna fire the bike up all right we're gonna start the, i'm gonna start the bike up it's been sitting it's cold all right I'm going to run it for like about five minutes to warm the oil up and then we're going to drain the oil. All right. Just like an oil change. All right. I got the key right here. Let's put it on the seat. Oh, wake up. Wake up, buddy. Sleep. Sleeping. It's in deep sleep. Okay. So you can, guys can see I just hit 8,000 miles. I got it right on the money. All right. So he's Vegas is pretty religious about the maintenance. All right. We're going to fire the bike up. And we're gonna let it run for about five minutes, all right? So I see you guys in five minutes. Maybe we'll let it, I'll let it cool off for a little while too, so. <laughs> all right, I just wanna point out, you should do this in a well-ventilated area, all right? If you're gonna be running the exhaust, right? So that's why I got my garage door open, okay? Right. Okay, it's about, been about five minutes. I give it a couple revs. And we'll shut it off. I'll let it cool down for like a minute. Um, and then we'll drain the oil. All right, so let's uh, yeah while it's cooling down Let's go take a look at the book. I will kind of loosely follow the book, but so if you look here on page uh, oh, page uh, 310 in the service manual it tells you how to 
clean the engine oil strainer and the engine centrifugal filter, all right? Um, so the first thing to do is to remove the right crankcase cover. So we already got to go somewhere else. <laughs> Okay, so uh, here I put a bookmark here, all right, because SV Racing sticker. There you go, guys. Um, and uh, there's um, it tells you how much the torque specs are, all right. That's why I kept one here, all right. Basically, the torque specs are nine foot pounds for the screw, the bolts that we'll be using, all right. Not a lot, guys. Not a lot. That's why it's important to use a torque wrench when you do this, because you don't want to break any of those bolts. And you don't want them to come loose, right? While you're riding. Okay. Alright, here on page 11-6 tells you how to remove the right crankcase cover. Pretty simple stuff. It says drain the engine oil. Okay, that's what I was wondering. I was like, it doesn't tell you to drain the engine oil. Um, but it tells you to drain the engine oil here, okay? Because obviously when you take that side cover off, all the oil is going to come spilling out if you don't drain it. So we're going to drain the engine oil. See page 3-9. That's fine. I know how to drain it. <laughs> Um, and then, so, then we're going to remove the gear shift pedal, okay. Um, I, I wouldn't normally do that. I know, why would you do that to take the cover off? But I'm going to do that because we're going to lay the bike on its side, alright. So I don't want the shifter to get all messed up. Uh, it's just to remove the exhaust pipe muffler. And that's, I am not going to do that, alright. Um, it looks like there's, there should be enough room. Right, so it looks like there should be enough room to get that cover off, alright. Because I watched somebody else's video, so... <laughs> All right, so I'm not going to do that. And the right crankcase cover protector, all right? That's that Kitako trim ring right there that I installed. We're not going to remove that either, all right? We're just going to leave that on there. There's no reason to take that off, guys, uh, unless you're worried about scratching it or something. All right, so it just says remove the bolts. There's a wire clamp, number two, on the upper right, and then in a crisscross pattern in several steps. All right, so... So yeah, I think I think they want you to do this, like loosen this, then loosen this, then loosen this, and to go in like a like star pattern, okay guys? Just do the one across from it. And I would do first I would do a couple turns and then and then start taking them all out, okay? Um, and then it, it may just fall out or it may or you may have to tap it with the hammer or something. We'll find out. Okay, so that's the plan guys. So first uh, first order of business, we're gonna drain the oil. Okay, and then we'll start taking taking off the step bar and the uh, and this guy okay and then I will I won't have a side stand anymore for a bit <laughs> okay and yeah make sure it's in neutral also um, I got it in neutral all right all right guys I got my mechanic suit on and I put a mat on the ground there's a reason I put a mat on the ground all right you'll find out it's still it's still lay the bike down on it <laughs> basically all right anyway here's super cub and we're gonna go drain the oil right now all right, it uh, my drain plug uses a 17 millimeter. All right, so here we go. So before I'm, I do anything, I'm going to. Uh, all right, so before I do anything, I, I got my oil pan, drain pan right here. All right, well you can see, I've scuffed up the 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 leg fairings quite a bit with my shenanigans as well. So okay, the oil drain is right here. I'm gonna kind of clean up that area a little bit, and we can clean it up after too. So but I'm just gonna get a rag, clean it. Looks nice and new again. It's pretty dirty after 8,000 miles. He's making a beats on this Super Cub all day. Oh my, oh look, this is a piece of gasket material right there. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing to take that out. <laughs> Let's just hang in there. Okay, just clean up that area that we're going to work in. As best as you can. Like a rag or something. I can feel the exhaust, it's still hot. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna loosen the the plug first, all right, but don't take it out because I don't have the drain pan underneath it. Okay, there we go. All right, now you can put your drain pan under it. Wow, this is barely enough room to get it under there. Okay. I have a little block underneath my uh, my thing. Okay, I'm gonna drain this. Also, we want to make sure we clean our. I have a magnetic drain plug, so I'm gonna make sure and clean that. You guys can take a look at it before I clean it to see how much gunk it has accumulated after 4,000 miles. Okay, 
we go. And there's that. I didn't even check what the oil level was before. As you can see, there's a there's a good amount of filth on that. Just let it drain. It's pretty dirty, guys. <laughs> so we got to change it. All right, I'll take that. Still wear gloves, also, guys. Okay, I'll just let that drain for a few minutes, like five minutes or something, until it gets it all out. And there's, so there's the plug right there, and uh, let's just get an idea how much crap it picked up. A lot. It takes out a lot, guys. So these, these magnetic drill, drain plugs really do work, guys. There's a lot of metal shavings and stuff in there. There's, there's a lot of metal to metal contact going on in the engine, guys. That's what it's called. It's, it's called engine wear. It's a normal thing, guys. Okay, so I'm gonna go clean that up a little better, and then uh, and then we'll go put the plug back in when. Uh, oh, oh yeah, another thing I forgot to do. All right, you can do this. You can also do this before. Uh, it's nice having this mat here. I like it. It's comfy. It's comfy. I can lie down on. One thing you could do to help drain the oil faster is let me clean that. It's a little dirty. We'll be working in this area later, so let's make sure it's nice and clean. Oh, I think I made it. I made it dirtier. Use a clean. Use a clean one. <laughs> Open your drain, your filler plug, okay? And that will let it drain faster, because there'll be a vent. So I should have done that before I opened it, but it's like I said, it's almost done draining already, okay? Not a lot of oil, right? And it's pretty thin stuff, it's synthetic stuff also. It's the good stuff. All right, let me go. I'll see you guys in a bit. I'll clean, I'm gonna clean up that, that plug. There's the plug right there, and um, as you see, it's much cleaner than it was before. <laughs> you can actually see the magnet now, right? It's still in good shape. If you guys are wondering, this is a gold plug MP01. I will put a link in the description of the video if you want to buy one of these guys on Amazon, okay? Um, it looks like it's a pretty good plug. It hasn't come apart yet. <laughs> All right. Um, so what I'm going to do next is uh, we're going to uh, we're going to remove the shift lever. All right. So I don't see you don't really have to remove it to get the cover off, but I'm going to remove it because we're going to lay the bike on its side. All right. I don't want the shift lever getting all bent and stuff or messed up. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay. I'm going to remove the shift lever now. Um, it it's a good idea to scribe where you had the shift lever was before, so you remember where to put it. Okay. Um, I think I have a. I still have the box there from last time, so I'm going to go with those. <laughs> All right. So mine takes two 10 millimeters to take off. All right. Um, because mine is broken. Okay. I have to drill it all the way through because the previous owner dorked it up. Okay. Try not to shift it in the gear while it's staying. But we definitely won't be starting this bike up. Will not come out until you get the whole bolt out, so I gotta take the whole thing. Okay. Side. Pull the shift lever off. There we go. Okay, shift lever is off. Okay, I'll let the oil drain a little bit longer, and we'll put the plug back in, and then we'll start on taking the step bar out. Okay, okay I think I've let it drain enough. Um, I'm going to go put the plug back in. Um, I'm going to get a rag or something and wipe that area clean All right, as much as possible. There's still some oil dripping out of it, but I'm not going to wait all day for it. Put the plug back in. Okay. 
Okay, I'm gonna go tighten the drain plug to 18 foot pounds. All right, that's how much the torque is. So there you go. 18 foot pounds. Okay, that should do it. Not very tight, guys. So you might mess up the engine. All right, there we go. And then uh, now we're gonna start taking the step bar out. So have at it. Okay, I'm gonna t I'm gonna start removing the step bar. Oh boy. How did I do this? Oh, okay, yeah. So we're gonna have to lower. We're gonna have to lower this brake lever to get this thing out. But um, all right. So it's a 12 millimeter. I hate taking this thing out. By the way, guys. Okay. It's four bolts. I'm just gonna loosen them all. It's a good thing they never. They haven't come loose yet. <laughs> okay. Okay, um, so I think to take the uh, step bar out, I gotta lower the brake and just move it forward or something. There you go. It should come out. There we go. Somehow. <laughs> Freaking exhaust is a little bit. Maybe that's what I told you to take the exhaust off. <laughs> uh, I, I'm trying to do it without taking the foot pegs off. Okay, the, there we go. Okay, I got it off. Okay, now we got no foot pegs on our, uh, now we basically have a scooter now. <laughs> this is basically what it is, a scooter that was right in neutral. All right. Okay, guys, so I've, I was been uh, agonizing how I was going to do this, how I was going to put the bike down on its side without damaging anything, and this is the answer I came up with, all right? I've got this old mat, all right, from my old van here. I had an old cargo van, and I had this mat in there, and I sold the cargo van, but I took the mat. I've never used it ever since. So. All right, but anyway, here it is. And I have also laid down a uh, a moving blanket. All right, I got a moving blanket right here, and then we're just gonna let it rip. All right, so I think the the trunk will hold it up. The trunk is pretty strong, and and then I think the plastics might touch on the ground. That's that's the one thing I worried. Hopefully nothing will crack. Okay, I don't, I don't I've never laid my super cup down so. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. Or we're gonna do a controlled drop, all right? We're gonna we're gonna lay it down, all right? Gonna get it off the center stand. It's a good thing it's still got a center stand. At least. Okay. Remember, don't turn it on because there's no oil in it. Right, I'm gonna move it towards the mat a little bit more. Got some more room to work with back here, also. So. Move it right next to the mat. Okay. I'm gonna lay it down and we'll see where it lands, type of thing. Right. Yeah, I think I want to pull pull that booby blanket closer to here. Oh. Good thing it's not a heavy bike. <laughs> right. Okay, so I, I imagine probably the the handle will touch down and the plastics. I'm wondering if I should have taken the plastics off. All right, I'm going to go on the other side and let it rip. <laughs> ah, there you go. I did it. I didn't break any of the plastics. That's <laughs> I think it's sitting on the plastic. But... Oh yeah, it's fine. Okay, there you go. It's on its side. Oh yeah, you know what? The gas tank might spill. Down. As you can see, I had to clear a lot of space in my garage so I can do this, all right? I still have my KLR in here, but I got rid of the Suron and I got rid of the DR. <laughs> the DR is over there hanging out, all right? But hopefully no fuel starts coming out. I guarantee you this, if it was a carbureted bike, it might come out, but 
since it's fuel injection, it kept kind of holds everything in there, so that's good. Okay, so let's uh, let's start taking that side cover off. All right. All right, he's big here, and so we're gonna do this from that angle. All right, guys. <laughs> all right, so it's just to take out all the bolts. All right, there is a there is a wire harness thing here, so you want to remember to put that back. And I think that's it. I know the weird stuff is there. Oh, okay, and then remove it in a crisscross pattern. So basically, it, I would remove this one, then remove this one, then remove this one. This will kind of like, so just go across from each other, okay? All right, so I'm going to go do it. It's kind of, I'm not going to lie, it's kind of annoying. Honda used freaking Allen head bolts, all right? So I, I've got a different uh, array of tools here. I've got a T handle, I've got a long socket, and, um, and this guy, all right, and you need these because you need to be able to torque it, all right, these ones are specifically. Okay, but I, I'd imagine the long, the long five millimeter socket is the one that's going to be the money, right? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to start loosening these. Okay. So notice I'm going in a crisscross pattern. The thing I don't like about these long Allen wrenches, they flex a lot, dude. They twist. All right, so the exhaust does kind of get in the way a little bit, but I think you can get the Allen wrench just in there, just enough so you could, so you could play ball. <laughs> so what's there? All right, there's one up here. Sorry, you guys can't see all the bolts from that angle. So basically, I'm just loosening them right now. Oh, this one was up. Come on. Okay, this one with the brake le brake lever is kind of annoying. And I think that's it. I'm just going to kind of go in a circle real quick to make sure I got I know I, know I got that one. What about this one here? Okay. Okay. I know I just did that one. Okay. So now I'm going to bust out the T-handle. I'll make it easier. Yeah, probably. I, you know what? I would just use the T-handle. That's what I would have probably was done. Okay, I'm going to loosen all of them all the way, then we'll just start taking all the bolts out. Still using that cross pattern. Oh, I should have left some extra mat for me because my knees are off of the ground right now. Oh, oh, there's one hiding behind the exhaust. How freaking annoying. Yeah, there's one right here. I missed it. It was hiding back there. I didn't, I didn't get this one either. Okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to remove this shield. That'll give me access. All right, this is the shield. Okay, so there's the a two five millimeter bolts here, and you can take this exhaust shield off. There's a little hook here that you hook it on. All right, anyway, I lost one of the bolts. Okay, you don't have to remove the exhaust, but you do have to remove the heat shield. <laughs> yeah, there we go. That's, now we got better access to it. Okay, there we go. Let's loosen this. Probably want to take this little rubber thingy off too. Don't forget to put it back on, or else your exhaust might start rattling. Double check, I got them all. <sighs> all right, sorry guys. I, I had the camera pointing in the wrong direction. But anyway, I made sure all these are loose, okay? Um, so they're all loose, I went through all of them. I picked, I lifted it up with my finger to make sure they're not doing anything, all right? 
Uh, one thing that you could do to make this a little easier is that the freaking brake lever is in the way. What you can do is get a block of wood and stick it underneath the engine. <laughs> just, just like that, <laughs> okay? But make sure it's not touching the cover. Okay. I think that's okay. That'll make it a little easier to work with. Okay, guys. Okay, so it should kind of just come off. Uh, let's do this. Yeah, we could just take it off like that. I don't need the place to put it. Hold on. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the bolts out and I'm going to lay it on top of the gasket. So I know I have two gaskets, guys. So um, I'm going to lay it on top of the gasket where I found it. That way I know where to put it back. I, I don't know if they're all the same size, so we'll find that out when I take it all out. All right. Okay, I was able to get all but one out, all right? I, I think we should be fine. Um, we'll just kind of lift it up and move it up out of the way, all right? So there's this wire harness thing here. You want to get that out of the way. All right. Okay, you just don't, for, just don't forget to put that back, okay? That See, that one may be a different size. I'm not sure. Okay, let's take it off. We'll just come right off. No. No. <laughs> okay, I'm going to have to tap it with a hammer or get a pry bar or something. Okay, I'm going to tap it. This dead little hammer. Okay, there's these uh, kind of protrusions here on the bottom. I'd imagine that's what you're going to use to uh, to knock the thing out if it's stuck like this. Okay. Okay, what I'm going to use is like a, a kind of a quarter inch driver. All right, I'm going to use this as a punch, and we're going to punch it out, all right? It's, it's pretty blunt. I don't think it'll damage it all that much. Yeah, I just had to give it a really good whack, <laughs> all right? And it came off, all right, there you go. All right, you got that? You getting this? Yeah. Okay, it's it's really tight. Yeah, it's really tight with the exhaust in there, but I think I got it. There we go. Oh, look at that, lucky me. Lucky me, the gasket stayed on there. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, I know, it stayed on there. You're lucky, Hades of Anger. You know what? I'm going to reuse that gasket now. <laughs> All right. Okay, yeah, but there's the cover right there. That's what it looks like inside. So uh, because I turned the bike on its side, nothing fell apart. All right, so, All right, so. so supposedly what falls apart is this thing right here. This thing falls off. All right, so just don't touch it. All right. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, start the party. Okay, so what did the trick was I hit it on those... Uh, those little protrusions on the on the case, all right. I hit it really hard, all right. <laughs> I was like, man, you need to hit it with a lot of force. So, but I see you can see there's an indentation, all right. You can see an indentation here. See those indentations? That's me hitting the those uh, those protrusions, all right. And then it went loose, all right. It looks like just a teeny tiny bit of gasket material came off. I think I'm gonna reuse it, all right. I it looks good, so we're not gonna thing it. Okay, well there it is. Feast your eyes. That's the what the what the inside of the right side cover looks like. All right, this is your centrifugal clutch, and then that's your other clutch right there. All right, the, the gearbox clutch. Marvel at that Honda engineering. All right.